if you're online and you provide a website where people can search homes, how are you any different than, than the next Great. agent? Welcome to the WBNL Podcast, your online source for finding balance, where you can align, connect, and prosper. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You've reached the WBNL Podcast, where real estate and reality meet. My name is Jan O'Brien, and I'm joined today with my co-host, Cosmo Marabi. He is our guest speaker again today. He's our partner in WBNL Coaching. And we're going to talk about how to define your unique selling proposition, but we're going to really tell a story, right, Cosmo? We're going to go down the path of, of really talking about Cosmo's story of how he is a living example of, of leveraging your, your uh, unique differentiation, your points of difference, how he's discovered that and how that's evolved into what we're doing with our team, our teams right now. We've really got it going on in Vegas, right? So Cosmo, thanks for coming back to uh, talk about things here in the podcast and share some great insights. And why don't we just dive right in? You're listening to the WBNL podcast. Subscribe and give us a review on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to visit us at WBNLcoaching.com, where you'll gain access to all of our online courses and real estate agent freebies. We're always adding new materials, so subscribe to our newsletter and stay ahead of the game. Why have you been thinking about this as, as a bit of a topic to share with people? I know you, you threw it by me and I'm like, yeah, I love this. Let's talk about it. So where's your mind been and where are you helping other agents try to uh, uh, discover this in your training? Yeah, it's, it's definitely been on the, my mind. And I do think it has to do a lot with the current times, right? Um, you know, once we were limiting our face-to-face, -face, right, um, we now got pushed into this pool as agents, everyone got pushed into this pool where their communication became online. And so you now were not able to bring out your your kind of one to one on one skills, right? So if you're in an area that couldn't hold open houses, and that's how you're doing business, you know, you now didn't have the opportunity to display your selling ability, right? And so it started to hit me that if you're online and you provide a website where people can search homes, how are you any different than, than the next Great. agent? And a lot of agents got clumped into this situation where, you know, they no longer have their unique or their ability to sell someone face to face. And so this has always been on my mind. And, and um, you know, as we are transitioning or you know, developing our, our Vegas uh, channel or Vegas um, team and that our branding and all of that's kind of coming together finally into this beautiful looking project. And it's just this huge circle of how everything interacts with everything else. Um, this has been on top of my mind on, on how do you differentiate yourself, especially in a world where we are now limited to just being an agent that can communicate primarily through virtual means. So what what are you going to be able to do to differentiate yourself? Because, um, you know, slowly we're losing uh, the opportunity to meet face to face. And um, I, I don't know. Uh, we don't know what's next. So um, if you don't already have a way of presenting yourself as different than the next agent, that's something you absolutely need. Um, Going That's forward. a great point you're making. You know, everyone training wise and coaching wise in all industries is generally always taught that you got to figure out what your UVP, your value or your sales proposition is. It's not brand new, but you, you make this valid point that with the one thing that always is happening in our industry is this change. Right. And, and the COVID-19 experience has really shown who has risen to the top because there are people having their best year ever in spite of all the other things. And it's because I think they really found that niche or they found that way to communicate better and so on. So what do you think are the common characteristics? Uh, by the way, everyone, this is episode 178. You can go to wbnlpodcast.com. Any of the show notes, anything that key points that we're talking about today or Cosmo has, any bits of wisdom, anything that we can point you to will be over in the show notes at wbnlpodcast.com. You can actually just go to WBNL Coaching as well and click on podcasts and you'll get all of our show notes, okay? So it's there for you. But what are the common things when you're talking to somebody about 
how does somebody start with going, all right, how do I define my unique selling proposition? What questions do I need to ask? What, how do I do, how do I stand out? And cause that's what we're talking about. How are you different than every other realtor who puts your house on the market, puts a sign in the yard, you know, and has a regular, you know, website, or even if they have that, how, what are the questions we want to get people to think about today? Yeah, definitely. And, and I think the best way to meet for me to present this or, or talk about this is, is my own personal journey. And, and that is almost realizing it's self-realization, right? What, what are you one, you know, like, what do you like to do? Also, what are you willing to, you know, you work at do? nonstop? Um, you know, especially when you're building out a business, you, you know, it is a business. We, you always say, <laughs> uh, you always refer to real estate as a business. A lot of people don't think of it that way right when they get in the business. But, um, you know, what are you willing to, to spend a lot of time doing? What do you enjoy doing? And what do you find yourself always falling back into? And that's what you were talking about with me, and, you know, after you met me. I just kept falling back into marketing and video marketing because you and love video. it. And, and even though there were other things that I tried and were doing was doing, I always came back to how do I do it with video? And so, um, you know, eventually that has clicked and, and, you know, the idea here is to go full throttle with video in the, in the most complex and, and uh, difficult platform, which is YouTube. Um, so, uh, that's where I'm at now and, and I'm very happy with it. You know, I will spend an extra five hours a day working on it. And those are the things, you know, that, that maybe a lot of agents need to sit down and think about is, is where is it that you are most inspired and willing to spend that time to develop your unique selling proposition or your differentiator when it comes to other agents in your area. So part one is to do a little self-analysis about what do you like to do? Yes. What really interests you? Okay. The couple keywords you said here are what are you willing to do consistently? Of course, that's the key for everything. But, and this is super important what you're saying, Cosmo, because if somebody says, well, I'm going to go do video and they don't really like it and you're not going to naturally want to do it. So you, it, it's super important to, and we're going to give some examples here also, and Cosmo is going to continue to talk about how we went from one thing to the next to kind of evolve to where we've gotten. But there's been a common theme through everything that is his point of differentiation and is his love and desire and his passion about being great at marketing, whatever marketing means, but mainly using tech, mainly online, social media, video, really becoming, uh, because you already loved it, right? I no. mean, I remember when, so if you haven't heard this story, I hired Dallas, I ran an ad and I had some things on LinkedIn and there's it, a great story of how Cosmo's wife, Dallas, and I met. She was basically a year in the business and I was with a different, a small company where I was um, uh, doing some coaching with them and I decided I was gonna build a team. And so I wanted to look for people who were veteran realtors. So I uh, placed an ad, um, you know, and I was out looking and I was actually using a technique that I teach people for recruiting. I was on LinkedIn looking for people who had realtor or veteran and they were licensed in Vegas. And I came across Dallas's LinkedIn and I messaged her and then I called her and then she tells me she had been looking for another broker or somebody to join and came across my LinkedIn before we even connected. It was a crazy yeah. story. When she told me that when we sat down to interview, I couldn't believe it. So I she was in the joined. same room when you called there too. And I remember we had talked, yeah, she had shown you or mentioned you. We were looking at you on, on the website and I think you called during that time too. So it was, it was very, Because well, I had odd. a veterans uh, website. I had taken a little WordPress site and I was building a Vegas veterans because I really had this whole dream of, of doing it. I still kind of have this dream of getting back to veterans out here in, in Vegas. I just haven't figured that out yet. We, we got to do one thing at a time. But here's what's cool about this. Cosmo, what stood out for me? And Cosmo, this you did this for her. Is I went to her wherever she was at the time website and she had an introduction video. So here she is a new agent and she, very few people had a video. And I was like, oh my God, I so want to work with this. So, so then I meet her 
fast forward, it's like you, then I meet you weeks later. I remember coming to your house and you're the, you don't, and at this point, Cosmo doesn't even have a license to everybody. Okay. He's going to be the marketing genius behind Dallas. And, uh, and so I, I say this because this is what makes us unique. I like all this stuff too. He's just 10 times better at it than me. So now together as team, we can, we can fast forward and, and, and you fill in the rest of these details, but you always wanted to do that so much so that you went and got a license. Dallas decided she didn't really like real estate. She tried a couple different versions of it. Now she's teaching school. And actually, now she's a homeschool mom, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, which is awesome because you have a new baby and everything's great. And now Cosmo takes the lead. He becomes the big, you know, successful real estate agent and uh, didn't really want to do that. I remember meeting with you and you're like, no, I'm going to pursue this other thing I want to do. I just like the video part and the marketing part, right? Is so that, that's that's good? a really important thing to touch on, right? Is you're you we're talking about things that you like to do and don't like to do. There are you have to be able to recognize if what you're doing, if there's a part of it that's you do like and a part of it that you don't like, and what is that part? And so, you know, to give you to give a little more insight and in what I mean by that is that, you know, when I was doing the videos where we would connect with local businesses, yes, I hated having to jump through the hoops to get to the owner to explain to the owner why we wanted to create a video with the local business. And, and that took a toll on me. But at the time I didn't recognize like, that's what was keeping me from creating so many videos. It wasn't that, video part i enjoyed making the videos and making marketing in and running ads in a way to attract a bigger audience on instagram we'll jump into that a little bit uh, in a little bit but um you have to be able to, to differentiate the tasks that are within what you're doing and find out like what is it that you enjoy and don't enjoy and i didn't do that and so you know at that time there was part of me like i am sick of this i don't want to do it anymore but the reality was I was just sick of this little part of it. I really enjoyed the other part. How do I continue moving towards that other part? Well, and how do and uh, so let's talk about that. What's is that is that become a thing where is there a way to have to delegate to get someone else to work with you? Like if you don't like that part and you're not gonna is that are you saying that's what made you move on to a different thing mainly from Instagram because you didn't really have someone else to delegate that part, like go find a business? That's no, no. I mean I mean it was yeah and then and that's something that you can't really hand off and and that might be one reason why you know i'm excited about fidacity realty again because the way that we connect with small businesses and you know that and exactly. so and, and so, so you get the small businesses coming to you and now you say i yeah, want to do these things for you so having a brokerage that connects with small businesses now i don't have to worry about the one part that i hated yeah. when i was doing those instagram videos so again you know that that's the realization over time that I've come to. Um, but if you're able to do that ahead of time and really break down every task that you're doing for your own marketing, what is it that you truly enjoy? And then is there a way of marketing that way that is more towards what you want to do? And so you, you eventually start building this brand, right? This is talking about building brand and all of that. And you find your way. But again, if, if you're not doing the review process, which I keep I always say in all my videos, right, is you have to do the task, figure out how to get the task done, and then spend time reviewing. And and um, I'm the type of person that's more, you know, on the fly and then try to improve. Um, but if you're eliminating that try to improve part, you're not going to get to this self-realization, um, you know, that, that I feel like I could have got to faster had I spent more time. Right. Okay. It, so. so it's kind of a, a self assess and come back and see and, and break it down. So, so we've, we've got, we've identified the first part and then what happens like, or c c do you want to talk about example, other examples? We're, we're using your example, but are there other ideas that we want to share with people? Or do you want to keep talking about like kind of how you've evolved to where you are now? Yeah. So let's, let's talk about this uh, kind of story of how we work. Yeah. So if you wanted to share the screen, so, you know, we're going way back in the day. Um, this is when kind of, I don't even know if I have my license at this point. I was just I helping know, Dallas. I don't think right? so, yeah. But this is kind of where we started, right? So we focused on, on 
you know, reaching out to veterans. And so we worked on different ways of doing this. And, you know, this isn't the best looking <laughs> thing. And, you know, I wouldn't give it a high rating nowadays, but look at um, how your own you skill set has evolved since then. Wow. <laughs> this is, it's you know, something that we ran and we sent brand, out, yeah. we sent out postcards, if you remember, and we yeah. were trying to run a, you know, a veterans event and trying to get people to show up to that. Um, but, you know, this was kind of the, the first, the start of figuring out marketing and just doing doing the tasks for marketing, which eventually led to, to video, right? And um, I didn't like doing this. I didn't like sending postcards. And so I realized that, that pretty quickly. Um, it does cost a lot of money. <laughs> it's a, it's really a huge investment. Results. I know mm -hmm. we, you talk about farming. It obviously works. We know it works. Um, but again, it's just a different form of marketing. Um, and so, you know, we started to, you know, get a, a little business and we transitioned into like full page flyers. So this is uh, one of the listings we had over in uh, Red Rock, right? right? And so we created this for our grand open house. And so... Um, this is when we tried that strategy of of trying to get the whole neighborhood to show up and and um, sending this out to every um, neighborhood around the area, as well as running online advertising with video to drive people through. And this is when I started diving into Facebook ads. So, um, listen, people came to the open house with that big flyer. I mean, that big, yeah, absolutely. That they they you know, enjoyed the sandwiches. Right from Rachel's kitchen and right. all the time and investment that go into a grand open house. Um, but again, you know, it was a lot of work and, and um, you know, my favorite part of it all was creating this video and running the advertisement. Right. Exactly. So, See, um, you know, as ding, time ding, goes ding, on, it's the little ding, ding, ding. This is what I really like to do. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so after that, I jumped into this, concept of work trying to reach out to FISBOs and what I would do is I call the FISBOs and I'd say hey you know I see your mark your uh, property on Zillow um, you know one thing that if you didn't know Zillow does if you have a video and and the CEO has openly stated this if you have a video attached to your listing they actually rank it higher so I'd love to cover there make you a quick one minute video I'll share with you show you how you can put it on Zillow um, I am working with current buyers, um, but I'd love to also view the property, get to know, you know, what it's like, because uh, I like to know the inventory around there. And, uh, you know, all I'm doing is making that video and handing it to you. I'm not going to ask you anything else. And so I ended up <laughs> doing that for a couple of FISBOs. And again, um, what I leveraged was video and I loved it, right? And I wasn't the type of person, you know, Jen, like I, I didn't love cold calling. Like this isn't something that I was natural at either, but I was willing to call FISBOs because I love making videos so much. And you I had an easy, that that you a had game. a cool reason to talk to them, Cosmo, which you, that maybe got you in the door. It's a little different. That's well, what that, we're that's, about here. that's one of the leverages, right? But, right. but for me to do that, I had to enjoy the task at which I was doing for them. Exactly. And, and again, this is all kind of coming full circle in that I didn't 100% realize that at the time, but that's what was happening. Um, and so, you know, with consistently making videos and then, you know, we started, you know, running ads on, on the highlight videos of new construction and all of that stuff. It eventually led to me forcing myself to be in front of the camera because a lot of this stuff, I wasn't in front of the camera. So these videos, I wouldn't be saying anything. I wouldn't be standing for the camera. Um, but eventually I found out I enjoyed video that much and that I want to be in front. I'm okay with being in front of the camera. So that's, that's the crazy part is, um, you know, I think this, I could have done this from the start and I would have enjoyed it. And uh, it just took some time. But you and, didn't and, know that until you yeah. went down the process of this, right? You yeah, just kept and, evolving. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, it led to us creating our YouTube channel and, you know, me being able to sit there and talk for nine minutes about a specific area. And then, 
utilizing all the video tricks and skills that I've learned over the years and editing and um, uh, and then you know now it's transitioned into we have a little bit of help with our with some VAs and you know mm -hmm. they are taking away a lot of the tasks that I don't enjoy doing which is creating specific social media content posts and and items like that and so uh, you know this this is what it's come down to is I love video I love making video I love telling the story through video. And if I can focus 100% on that, I'm willing to work the extra five hours to get that done. And uh, the big thing is, you know, we need to make sure that it transitions into business. And with real estate, brand is, is a huge part of that. And so, as you can see, we are finally kind of putting this beautiful brand together where, you know, whether you're on any social media channel, you're going to recognize these two colors and the text and the style. And, um, you know, we're transitioning to have our faces in every single photo. So I need to put a few more of mine in there. But as you can see, that's happening more and more. And, um, yeah, uh, this is the this is our old Instagram. So um, we'll, and that's when we'll you were doing all those things. And by the way, before you move forward to that, I want to, we'll to say to everybody that, that yeah. Cosmo loves this so much that he's put an incredible YouTube uh, for real estate course together, which we'll be launching in September at WBNL. Um, just get on our mailing list, go to WBNLcoaching.com, you know, drop us a note saying, Hey, let me know when that course comes out because we will be offering, you know, a launch special pricing for anybody that follows us on online, uh, at the podcast or on YouTube. Um, so, you know, and can we talk just one thing here? So you've been now going into the fifth, six months and by just you, I feel like you're in the last couple weeks or so with the Las Vegas YouTube channel starting to have maybe something that was a missing ingredient. And I can't wait in the next month or so, we'll, we'll talk again on the podcast uh, of success, right? Because if you're not consistent, like all of a sudden you're really starting to crank out videos, Cosmo, right? And, and, and because of everything on everybody's plate and other projects and everything that we're all doing, it is time consuming to commit to that. But just as a sidebar, are you starting to see some positive reactions? You guys are getting a ton more views. It's crazy, but what what do, what do people have to anticipate? Like it's like anything. Like I'll talk farming. If you're gonna do geo farming, I tell people, hey, you're not gonna get consistent anything to three to six months of consistently staying in front of people using that venue. Same thing here, right? You yeah, have to so consistently be putting stuff out. So talk a little bit about that, so people may be interested. They they can learn out. They can learn more. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll refer to it as a skill, right? Okay. And so this is a skill that has been developed over time. And that's what you find through doing something consistent. And, you know, me playing basketball my whole life, I refer to it as that, as you're consistent in the way that you, you practice and then the tasks that you do. And eventually you build up a skill or, or learn how to do something better or more efficiently. And in our case, you know, I think one of the, the biggest uh, stepping stones is that point where I see the brand coming together, right? And, um, you know, props to our, our VA team and then all of us working together on this, but um, developing a brand is not easy. And once we have this style and look, everything's starting to click. So, you know, just recently we started pushing this brand on Instagram. It's not even a week, right? And I'm seeing the connection of people that I used to have connection with on Instagram, liking, uh, even DMing us, and then even checking out the channel. And so now you have this situation where we're building a brand that's coming across all the platforms. And, I, and, and I'm seeing it and it's clicking and it's just a beautiful thing coming together. And, and I just want to keep pushing for it because <laughs> um, I, I enjoy all doing this type of off, stuff. Right? Yeah. yeah, all the work is starting to kind of pay off. We're seeing people that were clients mm -hmm. in the past. Oh, mm -hmm. give me one second. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have my oh, Alexa. Alexa is, oh, sorry. <laughs> that girl is your virtual assistant. <laughs> yeah, so... So yeah, we're we're starting to see um, past clients, uh, even referrals that I, recent referrals that I've had for business, they've been referred to go look at the YouTube videos. 
uh, if they're interested in the new homes over in uh, in Sparata, like you know, John and Katie have covered like five of them. So somebody that was interested in that area has actually watched all those videos, and there is branding that's happening. There, there. you and go. So, See, that's that's what we've been talking so these about. These are all the yeah. So I was just going to say, it just takes it's it's people in this business look for the magic bullet the the what's the instant success and i'm here to tell you folks there just isn't unless you walk into this business and you have a huge line of clients all lined up because of some connection that you might have and i have seen that that's very rare you must choose this is what we're talking about today. Choose your lane, choose, find that thing that is something you're passionate about that you can separate yourself. And then you've got to do it and do it and go through the process Cosmo has been talking about. It's not like um, what you, what we, just with what we started out, it was great to look at this today where we were going down this because I had this dream of creating a veterans. I haven't hundred percent given up on it, but I've, I've put it on the side burning. You jumped in to say, okay, let me take some of that marketing and it's evolved to where we are today. And that's been a, what, going on a three-year process to kind of define, honestly, we're getting into your third year of defining exactly what this team is all about. Mm -hmm. You and I have always been about supporting local businesses and being that local community voice and expert. And we, little remnants of it can be seen if somebody wrote a book on us eventually, right? If we're that, we become that good at this. It'd be like, wow, they had little trickles of doing this, but it took them a while to figure out how to define it separate it, turn it into their, their USP and, and really deliver on it. Right. And yeah. we're in the middle of telling that story to you right now. And as you continue to listen to us, we're going to be saying, because we stayed consistent because Cosmo said, Jen, this is the, this is the schedule. We meet every day and we talk about what our video boards are going to be on. And then we get it. We have a process that we put in place that has taken months to figure out how it works, right. How it works for us. Is that yeah. an accurate so statement? I think I think the proper title for this video would be like finding your unique selling proposition, right? That's it. Is, is mm -hmm. it's consistently paying attention to what you're doing in your marketing and what you enjoy doing, and pulling it and out. That's going to build your unique selling proposition. And and um, you know, we we didn't necessarily talk about you know what what are those selling propositions, but they don't have to be overly complicated, right? So in our case, ours is utilizing video and social media and online advertising in a way that is different from every other agent, right? So- Yeah, and how do you do it better than anybody else? And Because it's uniquely in your wheelhouse, right? Yeah, so. and and again, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. There, I've seen agents that have selling propositions where they'll say they're 100% on time every single time. And if you've had clients that have worked with multiple agents in the past, they've probably had ones that have been late several times, right? So totally. that could be a very differentiating point where you might say, hey, if I'm late, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars or I'm going to give you a hundred dollar credit or something crazy. I don't know, you know, if that can work then, but, but that can almost be the way that you word it in that, um, you know, that differentiates you is that I'm someone that's always on time. Um, maybe you have, a different way of presenting your buyers with with information on a house and how they rate houses and you mm -hmm. stick by it and uh, you're very confident in the way that you present that and that can be a very strong um, unique selling proposition that other agents won't have and so it doesn't have to be overly complicated especially in the start but if, if uh, for you know I could definitely see some um, agents that I've worked with that would be there like they could go that route and because of how um, highly detailed and organized they are, they should embrace that and, and show their clients that as their you know, unique selling. But they, I know agents that don't do that. And, and the USP is not sitting down. And if I see one more person, you know, do come up with a tagline because they just want to say, you know, professionalism, integrity, and results or something. No, that's not any work is in that. Everybody says that, right? That comes with, you ought to have those things. You need to be honest and have integrity and be professional. We yeah. all have to have those skill sets. So what we're talking about today is what's the thing? What's your thing? And it could be, let's talk about a few more ideas as we wrap this up. It, it's tied a little bit to your niche, your specialty. It could be, it could be you're the person who always answers the phone to your point on being on time. 
Um, I think of Frank Napoli, you know, uh, who passed and his, his son has taken over his business. And Frank Napoli was known, even as he built this big, huge team in Vegas, that he always answered his cell phone. That was his thing. Even if he had all these other people doing it, if he had his number out there, he would be in a conversation with you and you go, I'd have to answer the phone. Hey, it's Frank. I'm in, a, I'm in, you know, and he would so do simple. it. simple, yeah. And, and everybody knew they could get a hold of Frank. That's a big deal for a team, okay, that you're actually going to get the hold of the guy who runs the team. Uh, but that's, he liked to talk to people. So, and he was good I, at it, right? But that's the point. That's the thing. And the average person I would tell never you, say, I'll answer my phone, okay? Absolutely, because, uh, you know, I called you the other day working with uh, some sellers that I can't even get in contact with an agent. Like I like talk us to their front desk and uh, we've had a yep. five, five day delay on, on our response. And so it's, uh, it's definitely a one that is very valuable. <laughs> and, and if yeah. you're willing to, to commit and stick to that a hundred percent. So it could be you know, a unique characteristic or skill set that you have. It could be a niche or target market that you love and work with, whether it's veterans, first time home buyers, you're the person who works with seniors and everything you do is about serving that group of people or that type of property, for example. And it's then it's the way that you do it and how you separate yourself apart from everybody else that says they're, they're, they're a realtor that works with veterans, right? So it's kind of a two-parter in there where you may have a niche specialty but the selling proposition, so kind of it's like you're not all things to all people like we were talking about, Cosmo. You could be the person who always answers the phone. But then I think there's power in niching down to what your specialty is, right? Now, for yeah. us, for our team to, to kind of wrap this up is that we – I've always had this as a, as a dream and you have helped it come to fruition now with – and all the tools that we're using now with video and our new website that we're going to be going to allows us to be this team of local area experts with people specializing in different areas and maybe even types of properties. Okay. But right now we're focused on areas. So we're looking for a few more people to join our team that want to cover different parts of Vegas that we're not covering right now. And what is our value proposition? This is really cool. Not a, whole, a, a topic for another podcast team is how you team. take your USP and make it your team USP because that's what we're yeah. talking about right now is, you know, if I'm trying to attract buyers and sellers, we're going to talk about what we're different. If I'm trying to attract people to join our team, we're looking for very specific people. That's our target audience, an agent who has the skill set and wants to learn how to do what we can provide. And we're looking for buyers and sellers who like what we provide as a team, leveraging the latest in technology and the best in video tours and leveraging all of that to get what they want, which is to get their home sold. Or if they're a buyer, finding other ways to find them a home and so forth, right? Yeah. So that that's where it goes down. We're not just your average team. We provide these things, you know, and that's yeah. exactly what you're doing with your client. How are you different than everybody else? It's the way you deliver it. It's the way you communicate. It's the specialty that you have. It's worth starting that process and to do what Cosmo said a couple times today, do an analysis. If you've been in business for a while, step back and go, where are your, do you have a trend in the kind of clients that you're working with? That could be an indicator, right? Is there an area of town that you're that you really are drawn to? Do you like a certain part of the business? These are all the questions to do that self analysis, so you can start doing what he called the review. That's what you called it, right, Cosmo? Yeah. Reviewing. And, and where were your best experiences at? Those those are things that you you constantly need to ask yourself after every deal or every client that you get is where, you know, what what was the best thing that I did. Right. And then figure out how to do more of that. And so um, I love it. And 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 then any final uh, kind of ideas here or words for anyone? What if someone's yeah. new? What if they're I, new? Let's talk about that. What if someone's new? Do they should just do they just need to start thinking about it and be aware of it as they go? Like if you were to go back in time with what you know now, that's a better way to answer this, ask this question because you kind of alluded to it. Is there anything you would have done with it? You know, nobody can. But we're trying to pass on the knowledge of, of what you've gone through in the last couple of years. What would you give a person just starting or a year in the business on how to really help them figure out this USP for themselves? Yeah. So two, two main things. One is reflect after every action, um, you know, whether that's you getting your first listing presentation or consultation or selling your first house, whatever it may be, reflect on the activities that one you felt that you were the you know good at 
one that you enjoyed, and then obviously the ones that you want to improve on. So, but you can take what you enjoyed and what you're good at and find, you know, narrow that, that gap of, of building your niche, right? So that's, that's first of all, one way you can do that. The second thing is don't limit yourself to some of the activities that you, you want to do. So, you know, with, with the video, I feel like I, I felt like I couldn't be in front of the camera, right? And so that probably delayed things three to six months because um, I wasn't willing to try something myself that I already knew I kind of enjoyed doing. So, um, you know, don't don't limit yourself because you know you've built you've built some sort of limitation in your head that you can't do something. Okay. Um, go nice. ahead, try it. Um, you know, if anything, the past year and a half has also taught us, you know, there's, there's no time to waste, right? <laughs> if, you, if there's something that you want to try and achieve, go for it. Cause you know, we never know where this world's heading. And so, you know, take, take your shot, try new things and, um, yeah, con consistently figure out what you enjoy doing and what you're good at. And so. It's great. It's just great, a great conversation today, Cosmo. And thanks for sharing your particular journey that I've been a part of is the part that since I've met you, which has led us to where we are. And and folks, we are we are committed at WBNL Coaching. You know, we are all passionate, Matt, Cosmo, and I, about sharing, teaching, coaching, training, so much so that you know, we have made this commitment uh, that starting in September, you're going to continue. Obviously, we've been doing this podcast for quite a while. We'll have this, but we're going to be doing two to three videos a week. Hopefully, four total videos are going to be going out there on topics <laughs> yeah. for WBNL coaching. You know, a couple more videos that are around coaching and training, one from Cosmo, one from Matt, one from me, right? That's our goal as we're starting into the latter part of the year. That's where we're trying to get our business to. And we have a Facebook group that we call Dream Builders. And we really encourage you, if you're not already a part of our Dream Builders group, this is another area that we want to keep building and having conversations with people who are discovering us. And we want to do things like a, a monthly video, a monthly training session for that group of people. This is all totally free. This is all our free stuff. Go yeah. to WBNL Coaching. We have four courses that are free. We have a ton of free downloads and we're always adding it. Just get on our mailing list. You know, we're about providing a lot of it for free. I've had so much content out there for the years I've been doing all of this well before where we are now. We're going to continue to do that. Plus, obviously, we have some coaching uh, training programs online. But go check all that out, right? And get into our Dream Builder group. We're really excited about having some interaction. And I don't know, Cosmo, how many groups you belong to on Facebook. But you get a lot out of that, right? You have joined Facebook groups around marketing in particular. And haven't yeah, you absolutely. quite a bit from other people? There, I can tell you there's three that really propelled my business. And so we want to be able to kind of give back and do the same thing and, and even take it to another level with, with the monthly meeting. And so, you know, that meeting is used to help you guys figure out your unique selling proposition, right? So um, that's kind of the main focus is, is helping you build out the systems and uh, branding that you need in your business to grow. And so... Um, I'm most excited about that is is uh, being able to have people hop in there, ask us the questions that yeah, ask um, us anything, right? Well, give yeah. you some free advice, and we can learn from other people in the group. So come join us at Dream Builders. Just go to Facebook group. Uh, just go to Facebook, and you can search WBNL Dream Builders, and you'll find it. Um, Yep. I think that's actually the name of it. WBNL Dream Builders is the URL. So, yeah. all right, cool stuff. All right, everybody, that is all we have for this week, episode 178. As always, show notes. Uh, I took some notes while you were talking, Cosmo, so I'm going to put some more show notes in there and point everybody in the right direction on some action items so that you can start working on what your unique selling proposition is. Or if you have one, maybe it's time to revisit it. And are you doing everything you can to make sure that when somebody comes across anything about you online, what you're handing out, your marketing materials, it clearly lets them know who you are, right? So that's it. Thanks, everybody. Make it a great week. Cosmo, thanks so much. Um, we'll see you on, uh, you know, we'll Another get you more one, involved yeah. in these. We'll get Matt back next week, and Cosmo will be coming in as a frequent guest as well, too, and just another way that we can get some great content to you. Everybody make it a great week. See you next time. Awesome.